कांड डाल दो
nerves to go out there with you. I'm going to be like John and my socks is going to be wet when I leave here. Glad to be out here tonight. Glad the Lord saved me. Glad for everybody's out here. I don't have much on my heart, but I've got one little thought that, that helped me and maybe it helped somebody else. After I got saved, I, I listened to the devil a lot when I should be. And, and I finally, the Lord allowed me to understand that. When he talks to you, you feel it in your heart. You don't hear it with your ears. You feel it with your heart. When the devil talks to you, you hear it up here. That's where it's at. You know, that's all the thought I've got to life. Anybody has a prayer request now? <clears throat> I pray for Healthier than I am. They may be sensitive tonight. 
And there's no hope for them other than through my Jesus Christ. And if they choose, I like these folks that say that, that they knew that they were at their last, that they had their last chance. And, and if they choose not to accept the Lord, uh, it, it won't be good for them. And, and, uh, we pray and, and the Lord focused our eyes on something a long time ago. And, and uh, when you say we need to give you love for, that, for the brethren, I believe the Bible says, but, but I know there's something changed. And like you said, the old officer, he'll work with this mind and he'll have you twisted around the eyes and eyes and everything else. If you care for me, all that little sweet voice that, that leads his sheep along, as my brother said, their son, and that uh, his sheep know his voice. And boy, we follow that. Uh, if you'll follow that tonight, anyone, follow that, we'll, we'll go the right way. But thankful to be here to see you. Blessed to see all these folks that's done this way. Blessed to have you this with us this evening. And, uh, and, uh, looking forward to this service. I really am. And I've already been blessed to be here, but, but I'm looking forward to the rest of it. Uh, Lord, might, Lord might get it off in two more minutes. I don't know, but, but I'm, still looking, I'm still looking forward to whatever he uses. I hope we have a hallelujah meeting and I'll just pull and uh, if it be his will, let's do it. And uh, I'm thankful to be here. I'm to be saved. And boy, I'm glad to know. I'm glad to feel it in my heart. And some folks say, well, you got to know. Well, I do know. I, I, that's one thing that I know more than anything. Uh, he saved me one day. Good to be Today, young boy, I talked about last week. He's very clear to me. I was walking to get the mail over. I felt happy he had had the answer to go up. It's a surgery. And he said, Bitch, I'm going to have that surgery. Just keep him. He had to pray for him. I told him I was going to do it anyway. You know, after I was praying for him, I got many more. And I went by the blessing not to, you know. I didn't. I got off a little late and had to run the place for food. I didn't think I might go home and dump the chair out of the oven. More blessed to be here, not glad. I could easily stay home, you know, but I was at home past six o'clock, and I waited here, you know. And I'm glad for that. Thank you. 
moving on, I have several requests. service and it just felt like the whole rest of the week didn't feel right. It's like I did I, like I lost connection with the Lord or something. And I, I'm just glad that he gives me the desire to come. And I don't ever want him to take that away from me. I've got some lost family members on the chart right now. I don't want to go to the 
Jesus. Then hell is ordained. I'd rather be led by his hell tears hand.
The world don't have it. You see, the world would like you to believe that you can get anything you need out there in the world. And there's a lot of people out there that they'll stand around on the street corner and they'll try to read you God's word and say they're feeding you. But I'm going to tell you something. You have to pull yourself up to the table if you want something to eat. As a little boy, I remember, y'all just pray for me. I want to get where the Lord wants me to be. I, I remember my grandma had 11 kids. Twice a year, all 11 kids and all the grandkids would be at that house. A little four room house. Easter and Christmas. Every one of her children and every one of her grandchildren would be there. She fixed the biggest meals you've ever seen. And she'd tell you, if you want something to eat, you better get it. Because they probably ain't going to be much left time at last one gets the plate. So you talking about people just hand over fish trying to get there and get that food. Some of my cousins, they couldn't wait to come in because they knew how good grandma's food was. But you see, there came a time when Grandma wasn't able to fix that food no more. I'd give anything to have a big bowl of her. Chicken and dumplings. Ain't a lot of people make them, but they'll never be nobody make my grandma. I'm sure you think the same way about your grandma. But you see, Grandma was living on to be with the Lord. But the church is still here. One thing my grandma made sure of is on Sunday morning that we was right here in this church where we could hear the word of God. That we could get that spiritual food that would carry us along. And tonight, I've been thinking a lot about the church and how precious she is. And if y'all want to read along with me, I'm going to read in the first chapter of the book of Haggai. Very familiar scripture. I'm going to start the second verse here, and it says, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, These people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, It is time for you, O ye, to dwell, to dwell in your sealed houses, and that this house lie waste. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have so much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye, are, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe, but there is none more. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put them in a bag of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. And I'm going to stop right there for a minute. But uh, you see, the Lord's house was in ruins. And uh, God had delivered his children out of Egypt. And uh, they had forgotten all about his house. They were too worried about building their own houses. Uh, they were too worried about doing things their way. Uh, uh, they had forgotten about the Lord, you see. And uh, when I think about the church house, uh, I think about the house of the Lord. Uh, uh, she's been forsaken for so long. Well, uh, this place ought to be full right now. Uh, uh, we're going through a time. Uh, uh, everybody's scared to death of this COVID. Uh, uh, you think the church has to be full? Uh, uh, people scared to death about this war going on over there. Uh, uh, but I want to tell you right now, uh, uh, the church is no more fuller today uh, uh, than what she was a year ago. Uh, uh, but listen to me today. Uh, uh, God's house, uh, uh, this house, uh, uh, He gave it to us to come and worship Him. Uh, uh, he said, consider your ways. Yeah. He didn't say, consider mine. He said, consider your ways. Yeah. How are you living? Uh, are you living for God? Uh, or are you living for the world? Uh, uh, have you gone out here like he said? I'm uh, uh, worried about making money. I'm uh, uh, putting it in holes. I'm uh, uh, putting it in a bag with holes in it. Uh, it's not good for anything. Uh, uh, you think about all the food that you can eat. Uh, if you had a closet full of food. Uh,
them people. Uh, uh, when I was young, uh, I got saved. Uh, I got out into the world doing worldly things. Uh, and I used to say, uh, oh, well, the devil's got me. Uh, I'm wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, uh, the devil never had me. Uh, uh, from the time I got saved, uh, uh, the devil's never had me. Uh, uh, but I have a hold of the devil. Uh, I ran out of his tail. Uh, and he was dragging me everywhere. Uh, he drug me through the world. Uh, and one time, uh, I came back. Uh, and I come into the house of God. I consider my ways. Oh, they were not the ways of God. Oh, they were the ways of the world. Oh, he showed them to me. Oh, let me tell you something right now. I was not happy of where I was at. I wasn't happy with nothing. I had nothing. Oh, because I didn't listen to God. I was listening to the world. I was listening to the devil. He drove me all over the world. Oh, but guess what? I thank God. Oh, there's a man of God stood and he preached the Word of God in his house and he fed me that night. Oh, my soul found something that it was desiring. I had been starving to death because I hadn't been to his house. I hadn't pulled myself up to the table and ate. I was starving to death. Oh, but guess what? That preacher preached it that night. I come up to the altar and I make things right with the Lord. And all I can say is, the Lord forgive me. And He forgave me that quick. He turned my life around. I did not know He's going to call me to preach. No, but it don't matter. You see, I had a place to be that night. And it was in the Lord's house. Boy, if I had to say it in my house, in my sealed house. Yeah, the Lord blessed me with a place up there in Greece and Greek, up in the holler. I've got a place that I call home. It's a roof on my head. It does very well for me. It's a good place the Lord blessed me with it. But it's not where I get a hold of the Lord. No, sir. Yeah, I can get down and pray. And he'll be there with me. But when I really need that spiritual food, i got to pull myself up to his table and get a bite. Well, let me tell you something tonight. He said here, Consider your ways. Thus so saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. He says, Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Oh, ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And we, and when ye brought it home, it did blow up. Blow upon, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is waste, and ye run every man unto his own house. Therefore, the he heaven over you is saved from dew, and the earth is saved from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth. And upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. Then Zebariah, the son of Shephel, and Joshua, the son of Jodak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God, and the words of Haggai and the prophet as the Lord their God had sent him, and the people did fear before the Lord. Then speak Haggai the Lord's messenger in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. And uh, the reason why I want to finish reading that was, uh, uh, you see, he was telling them there, uh, uh, you've done been out here in the world, and uh, you've done, done all these things, and uh, you've had your time to do whatever you wanted to do. Uh, uh, but tonight, uh, uh, right now, is your time uh, uh, to serve me. Uh, and if you'll serve me, uh, I'll be pleased with you. Uh, I'll be ready to accept you back into the house of the Lord. Uh, I'll be ready for you to come in uh, and take yourself out of the world. Uh, and I'll bless you. Uh, uh, no matter where you go, uh, uh, no matter what you do, uh, I'll bless you in it. You see, I'll tell you right now, uh, 
ever since I've been back in the, the church. The Lord has blessed me more than I ever deserved. I'll tell you what, I thought many times, uh, uh, why didn't the Lord just go ahead and take me out uh, uh, when I was doing all those foolish things? Uh, uh, you see, He had a job for me to do. Uh, uh, he had a desire. Uh, uh, he wanted me to be in His house doing His work. The Lord felt a desire for you tonight to be in His house doing His work and He'll feed you. You see, God's got a desire for you to listen to Him and not the world. He's got a desire for you to serve Him and not the world. You see, I'm still living in the world. All this old flesh you look at, He has to earn a living. I have to go out here in the world and do things. But I'm going to tell you this. The Lord blesses me every day to shine my light out to somebody. When you're out there working, you can be a difference. I tell you what, some of the men I work with, they don't talk right. They've got all kinds of bad things to say. And when I first got back in church, I was right there with them. I listened to their old stuff. I'd stand right there and listen. Well, well, the Lord convicted me of it. And one day, they started talking that stuff. I said, y'all going to talk like that? I'm going over here somewhere. And I said, well, thank you, Lord. The next time I walked up, they started talking that old stuff. I walked away. They said, what's wrong, Keith? I said, well, boy, when I go to church, I don't want to hear that stuff. Y'all can talk it somewhere else. I'll just leave. Well, well. Well, I, I, now when I walk up, uh, uh, they might hush. Uh, uh, they might say, well, Keith, uh, uh, we'll finish this conversation later. Uh, uh, but listen to me. Uh, if you'll be a lot in their life, you'll serve the Lord. You serve the Lord. And He'll make the way. You see, don't do it your way. Do it His way. Consider your ways. You've done tried it your way. You done tried everything there is. Maybe you tried it the Lord's way. You say, well, I've been saved. Well, that's great. That's wonderful. But you know, being saved ain't all they are too. You see, there's somebody in your life that's watching you. Hey, somebody watches every move you make, waiting for you to make a mistake. They may not remember the 1,001 things that you've done right, but you do that one thing wrong, and they're all over top of it. Why? Because that's what the devil shows them. But let me tell you something. You can conquer that too. Because you can say, look at them and say, well, I'm sorry. I know I was wrong. Oh boy, that tears them up then. You're admitting you're wrong? How do you do that? In the power of the Lord. You see, He has all power. He knows everybody's thoughts. How many times have you said something or done something and uh, get down the road and the Lord convicts you and you have to go and apologize. You say, that's the power of the Lord. See, He knows what that person was thinking too. And if He knows it's going to cause them not to appreciate you, maybe to have a bad thought about you, He wants you to turn around and make it right. You might be the very one that gets them to come to this altar and be saved. They might say, I want to go there where He's at. I want to hear what His preacher's preaching. I want to hear what the Lord is saying. Boy, wouldn't it be great for him to get up and testify and say, well, I used to think bad, brother, so-and-so, sister, so-and-so. Uh, but the boy, let me tell you something. That was the devil. Uh, I left nothing, nothing but show me the love. Uh, uh, show me the Lord. Uh, boy, wouldn't that be great to hear? But you see, so he's why I said, consider your ways. You're not supposed to consider my ways. I'm not supposed to consider your ways. But you're supposed to consider your own ways. If you consider your ways, I promise you, there ain't a person here this night that can't say, I need to get a little closer. If you truly consider your ways, I guarantee you can get a little closer. Hey, you know, preacher, because I'm one of them. I fail him on a daily basis. I have to repent two or three times a day. Guess what? He still loves me. He picks me up every morning, gets me out of that bed. First thing I do is get down and pray. Thank you, Lord, for another day. Be your will. Bless me to make it through this day. Remember all those out there that's lost needs to be saved. 
Well, let me tell you something. You are the light in the world. You may be the only light that some people get to see. We're in fourth and fifth, in some cases, six generations of people that haven't been to the church out there in this world today. Don't take their children. My mom and dad took me down there every Sunday. I'm sick and tired of church, and I'm not going to make my kids go through that. Well, they really didn't get what they needed if they feel like that. Let me tell you something. I heard an old preacher say one time that he had a drug problem when he was little. He said, I was drugged to every church there was in them four counties. <laughs> he said, it wasn't a matter of if we were going to church, it was a matter of where we were going to church. <coughs> you know, what the Lord is telling us here tonight is consider your ways. Are you in the house of the Lord? Are you able to pull yourself up to the table and eat tonight? Or you need somebody to bring you a plate? You need somebody to carry it to you. If you need somebody to carry it to you tonight, you need to be right here on this altar tonight. If you're here tonight and uh, you're lost and uh, you've tried everything in the world to try to be saved, and uh, the Lord just seems not to be calling you. Uh, and one night uh, uh, you felt like the Lord called you, uh, uh, but you just don't know what to do with it. Uh, I want you to consider something tonight. I uh, uh, don't consider what you've heard uh, uh, from somebody. I uh, uh, consider what you've heard from the Lord. I uh, uh, listen to your heart tonight. Don't listen to man. Don't listen to what somebody's told you. But listen to what says the Word of God. Uh, listen to what the Lord is saying to your heart. I love what Brother Mike said when he was opening up. Uh, uh, you see, uh, uh, he said he used to listen with his ear uh, and let the devil take him away from the Lord. Uh, but one time, uh, he said he got to thinking uh, and it wasn't with this he's supposed to be listening with. Uh, it was this that he's supposed to listen with. Uh, uh, let me tell you something tonight. Uh, uh, your heart will be right with the Lord. That's right. I tell you for sure. I tell you this. No matter where you're at in the world, no matter who you're around or who you're with, <coughs> if you're one of God's children and you're doing something wrong, you'll feel it right here. You won't hear it up here. You'll feel it right here. Your heart will feel like it's going to come out of your chest. You'll feel like somebody's beating on your chest. Let me tell you something. Don't do it. That's easy said, easier said than done. Sometimes we get caught up in the things of the world when we take it off after it. Like I said earlier, if you got a hold of the devil's tail, let go. Reach up for the Lord and he'll get a hold of your hand and set you right back where you need to be. Yeah. Tonight I want you to consider your ways. Consider how you feel tonight. And I want to I want to get a song here and I want you to consider this. If the Lord come by your house tonight to visit you, would you be prepared? If the Lord come by tonight with a job for you to do, would you be able to do it? Or would you have to pray for yourself first? If somebody you love calls you right now and needs you to pray for them, said, I need you to pray right now, could you pray for them? Oh, you have to pray for yourself first. Consider your ways tonight. Consider where you're at with the Lord tonight. Don't worry about where somebody else is. Don't worry about where the preacher's at. Don't worry about where the pastor's at. Don't worry about where mom and dad and grandma and grandpa are. Uh, uh, where are you at with the Lord tonight? Consider your ways. That's who the Lord's going to deal with on your behalf. That's who the Lord's looking at. When it comes to you and Him, He don't care what your buddies do. He don't care what your family does. He's worried about what you're doing. Consider your way. I want everybody to stay. I want to get this song. And if you need to come to this altar tonight and pray, you come. I guarantee you this whole church will get down and pray with you. But I want you to consider your ways tonight. Consider how the Lord Gave the very best he had for you. He made a promise with you when he saved your soul. Never to forsake you. He's never left you one time. You 
God put my back in the world. But He's still right there with you. He's still got a hold of you. He ain't going to let the devil have you. Think about what Job when the devil was after him. He said, well, you won't. There's no way he'll turn against you if he got his hands up. He said, remove the hand and he'll curse you and die. He said, you can do all that you want to do to him, but you can't take his life. That's where the Lord is with you tonight. You're not going to leave until the Lord gives you up. Consider your ways tonight. What are you going to do with the Lord? What are you going to do with this?
consider my ways and, and I'm not I want everybody to be right. I want everybody to have it fixed up. But that, that starts with me. And uh, every one of us ought to consider the ways. But I, I thought about one more thing instead. I'm going to ask him to sing that last verse. But I, I thought about, he, he said, are you happy where you're at? And you come find out all of them that he read about that. And, and you can talk about a house that they were working on, the house of the Lord. And you can talk about your house. And I'm not talking about where your shingles may be leaking or not. That, that might be a project for Saturday. I'm talking about, you'll say this house. Are you happy with the Lord? Are you happy where you're at with him? I pray that everybody here is. It's typical death where they're at. But it, you know, if you're not, you may be here tonight and you may be lost. Or you ain't too happy, are you? Well, especially if the Lord showed you that you're lost. Oh, uh, that's, that's a miserable place to be. i tell you what else, it's a miserable place to be and not be, to be saved and not have the Lord the Lord would have you. That's a miserable place to be. I, I, I'm, I'm going to ask him. I'm not going to preach and I'm not even going to try to. You've already had enough preaching. I'm going to ask him to sing more, one more verse and I want you to ask yourself if you're happy where you're at. If you're happy where you're at with the Lord. And if you are, you'll have one walk out of that door when this next verse is up. Alright? But if you're not, you make your way up here to this altar. And you make and you fix things up with the walls. And when you get up off of here, you go out that door, you'll be happy with it. Yeah. Alright? Alright, I'm not gonna beat you in the head on Wednesday night. We're not going Just ask yourself that question. Each and every one of us don't. I don't want Hager to ask if Paul ain't happy with himself. I ain't gonna ask if he's happy with himself. Hey, you know, I asked himself, he's my brother, and I don't know if that's his seat. And I want you to ask, I want you to ask for yourself, am I truly happy for a man? I bet mean, brother Lee H is happy right now where he's at because he made a son with the Lord. And things worked out in his life. But I bet you'd be happy tonight too if you, if you did what the Lord would have you do. Ain't that my son? Oh, my God. 
carried his Bible in his pocket ever since when, when I first got here. He was a little fellow or a little fellow, but he got that Bible in his pocket. He showed me that Bible when he went to the church. I guess we need a, a motion that we sent with sympathy for as a candidate for baptism. I make a motion to sympathy for as a candidate. Sure. Brother John accepts that motion. All in favor? Any opposed to that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Get a song we'll come around six hand. Praise the Lord. Get the breaker up.
So what else? Oh, I'm going to be right up to the front door. Yes, I'm going to go to the front door. It made my life a lot better. Then somebody gets shot back from all the parties in time. Yes. It's good to be here. I'm making a part. That's for sure. Hey, I belong here. I've been going to other church and other people. God knows what it is. I'm glad I'm so warm and old, ain't you? Ain't that man no better be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. We might fail on him, but he's going to fail us. Amen. We ask the Lord to give us what we do in his life. Matter his life, it's a better place to go to. I'm going to want him to go. I hope everybody. So what else? On Thursday, we went to school. I didn't want to talk to Nancy Crawford. I thought, Lord, don't let me tell me nothing wrong. When we began to talk, it just seemed like there was the sweetest spirit coming out in that farm. And by the time we got to school, we came back and crying. You know, I know the Lord was working, and I know it was just a matter of time before he made it. I know he knew that I was going to be so upset, and he said, well, you're going to try to go to church? I said, yeah, I'm going to church. I said, if I die, I'm going to miss that again. And I wanted to miss this for nothing. Yeah, praise the That's the way we all come, man. Yeah. That's the way we all come. Thank you for that. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> we didn't end the service Sunday, and I don't like to go into this like Let's just go on and let's just keep praying. We pray for Sunday morning service. Keep praying about it. We pray for Keith and his church. And by all means, the Lord lets you come back Sunday morning. Come on. <laughs> I'll be all right, too. Uh, I'm going to pray. The Lord's worked some things down. There's a reason for it. Stay in that one nine, one four. Yeah. We'll not need we'll not this service, but you're here to be God. I'm thankful for this. These three men here that I've been 